successful. So um, here's what I've been to do. It's Friday night, and you have the entire weekend to complete some work, whether you're a student or maybe an adult, some assignments from the workplace. And some of you may be the not procrastinator. You get your work done early. Um, you either finish your work on Friday night or Saturday night, and you're good to go. Some of you may put it off until Sunday night, but it's all right because you get your work done and before the deadline. Some of you may fit a lot of work to, into one night. So all those labs, papers, projects, all into one night. Not the best idea, but okay if you get it in. Some of you may still be procrastinating past the deadline. Sometimes me. <laughs> So we know procrastination is a common problem in a lot of our lives, whether it be school, work, or just life in general. But is it completely and utterly detrimental? No. So the common side to the argument is that procrastination, usually we try and make our work plan look, look something like this. We maybe start off a little bit easy, and then towards the deadline, we increase our workload and we get our things done on a timely fashion. But so many times it just ends up like this, where something distracts us or we're occupied with something else and suddenly it's the last possible moment before the deadline and we have to get all this work done. Procrastination is not a modern phenomenon. Here is Hassad. Hassad was an ancient Greek poet around 700 BCE and he had a um, piece titled Works and Days. And his, he mentions his brother Perseus. Perseus was actually your ultimate procrastinator during that time. Um, he would not farm or work or do anything for his own survival. And he comes crawling to his brother Hassad for money, for food, just to survive. Now this may be a bit extreme, but let's take a modern example. Margaret Atwood. She's one of Canada's most prized authors. She's written novels, poetry collections, short story collections, and film scripts. But she's also a procrastinator. She said she spends the morning procrastinating and worrying, and then plunges into the manuscript in a frenzy of anxiety around 3 p.m. And we see procrastination as a problem that we want to get rid of and push out of our lives. And we maybe turn to help self, we turn to self-help books such as this, or maybe videos or talk shows just to get rid of this problem. Adam Grant conducted a study um, on procrastination and using my sweeper. So there was a control group and two experimental groups. The control group, all three groups were assigned a task and assignment to complete, and an unlimited time period to complete it as well. Um, the control group immediately went to go start the assignment and finish it. The first experimental group played Minesweeper for five minutes, and then went on to complete the assignment. The second experimental group played Minesweeper for 10 minutes before going on to complete the assignment as well. The five minute experimental group actually were much more efficient, much more creative, much more original in their work compared to the non-procrastinating control group. But the 10 minute group actually did on the same level as the non-procrastinating control group. So there was actual, so there's actually a small space between procrastinating a lot and not even procrastinating at all that we should focus on. Even when writing his book, Adam Grant, wrote a book titled Originals. Ironically, writing a chapter of procrastination um, took his half-written chapter and ignored it for a few weeks. And then when he came back to it, he realized he made countless errors, edits that he could make, and ideas, new ideas that he could bring to the table. Here's another famous example. Martin Luther King Jr an iconic American figure, leader of the civil rights movement. However, he was also a procrastinator. The night before the watch, the March on Washington, he stayed up until 3 a.m. writing his speech. 
And even before going onto the podium, he was actually seen making corrections and marking things in his paper. And then even on the podium, he didn't use that speech he wrote. The entire I Have a Dream speech was completely made up on the spot. In a 2005 study by the Department of Organizational Psychology at Columbia University, researchers differentiated two types of procrastination, passive versus active. Passive procrastination is your common traditional procrastination. The person fails to complete their assignment to their fullest potential or capability, and they sometimes even fail to complete it at all. Active procrastination is around the same level of procrastinating. However, they have a different mindset. They purposefully put off their work and work under pressure in order to become even more successful. Frank Portnoy, um, professor of finance and law at the University of San Diego, wrote a book titled Wait, the Art and Science of Delay. And in this book, he talks about putting things off until the last minute, such as you have a decision to make and you make it at the last possible moment. And in this book, he says that people are going to have an impossible amount, impossible amount of tasks to do. So they start imposing a great deal of delay on doing some of those tasks. And so the question is not whether we are procrastinating, it's it is whether we're procrastinating well. Sergey Gavrile, um, a professor at, at the University of Tennessee and an evolutionary biologist, was asked in an interview what, if he had more time and more opportunities to do something, what would he do? He said he would play golf. And that was apparently where he got most of his creative breakthroughs, actually. He says playing, being surrounded by trees and grass for five hours and um, occupying himself with this straightforward but maddening task, he was able to subconsciously maybe, or from a different perspective, think about what he was, what he was doing with his evolutionary biology work. And he was able to um, think of new ideas, make creative breakthroughs. So when applying this to our lives, we should always remember that before doing something, that we should take the time to step back. We should realize that there is a sweet spot of effective creativity, originality, and efficiency between your procrastination and non-procrastination. And that before doing something, we should take a step back, prepare ourselves, and really think about what we're going to do before going on, stepping forward, and actually doing Thank you.